Welcome to the show. This is your host, Amanda Barr, and I'm so excited you're joining us here today live, or you might be listening on our podcast or even watching this video after the after the live show, which is great. I've got an incredible guest with us today. You're going to love Michael Garvey. He is the host of Unmotivated Habits, a podcast, and also it's a show that's aiming to improve lives incrementally and sustainably. Guess what? No, vote, no motivation required. And he is a past rugby, rugby player. We're going to talk about that as well. So welcome to the show, Michael. Thank you so much for having me. If you hear dogs barking or babies crying <laughs> in the background, I'm sorry, but it's the, there's oh, one right There now. we go. There we go. We are live in action. So this is, um, it's so fun because I know that getting to share in people's lives, our lives and our business, everything kind of now with COVID, it all moved together. Now you have an interesting background. Can you share a little bit more about what you were doing before and what kind of got you into this uh, hosting of a podcast? Sure. So it, it kind of fits in with the whole shifters idea. I was, um, I played professional rugby for a bit. Uh, I, I played in the Rugby League World Cup in 2013. And then from then I, from there, I went right into like the, the nine to five working world. And um, it was, that was a major shift. And uh, I was always so big into fitness and um, just staying in shape in general. And that that started to drop off. <clears throat> As you know, when you're working a nine to five job, it's hard to to when you were working out for a living, getting back into that world, it's a it's a major change. So for a while, um, you know, I try to I try to get back into the gym in the hours I had, but I try to do it the way I was doing it before, you know, two, three hours full on workouts. And it just didn't work well with a, a new marriage and uh, my job. So for a couple of years, things just dropped off. And then I tried to do triathlons. I still do triathlons from time to time, but um, it was a few years of just trying to figure things out. And that really came to a head, uh, I'd say a couple of years ago where I realized, you know what, I'm never going to be, I'm never going to be working out three hours a day. Like I was I'm never going to be in the shape I, I was. Um, but if I can start doing little things to get myself back on track, um, that would be super helpful. And that's what I started doing. I started just walking and meditating and doing these tiny little things I could do in the time I had. And that has had a, a snowball effect to the point where um, just this past December, I think probably since we talked last, I um, I quit my job. Hmm. Uh, I, took an, I took a new job making you know, a lot less money, but it allowed me to clock out at the end of the day and to do the things I wanted to do, like the podcast, um, like all my habits. And um, it was the best decision I ever made. Um, and it, it allowed me to focus on the show, focus on myself. And it's translated into, I think we spoke about this before, when you do things for the right reasons, things just seem to work out. And um, everything has been working out since then. And I, I know we're going to get into that a little bit. Absolutely. Well, thank you for sharing. I mean, it's it's great to hear. I know that even for myself, being a uh, former athlete and getting into the business world, it's yeah. I haven't been to the gym. There's a gym, like not even <laughs> like it's almost sad how close it is. <laughs> so those just getting it back into that habit and committing to it. But you had an interesting backstory to your transition. Can you share a little bit more of? Because I think it would be you know, maybe it'd be good for those listening here to hear that part of your journey. Are you speaking about the injury part of the journey? <clears throat> yeah. So, yeah, so I continued to play rugby, you know, recreationally. And that really was, that was everything because that allowed me to have that outlet I had while still working. But then in 2016, I had a, a major concussion. I'd had concussions before, but this one really uh, took it out of me. I couldn't look at screens for weeks. Um, you know, a month later, I, I went for a run and I still couldn't do it. I was just jogging. I, I couldn't, I couldn't do it without getting headaches and dizziness. So that really was the end of my rugby journey. So that with that outlet gone, um, I really had to find a way to shift and get get that aspect of my life somehow back. And that's what led to the the unmotivated habits part of things where mm. um, I just started really small and got passionate about uh, incremental improvements in every aspect of my life, uh, work, 
uh, meditation, running. I started running more. I it did eventually get back into the gym. I'm happy with my fitness at this point. But um, yeah, that was a, a major change in my life to try to, it, it changed everything because rugby right. at that point had been such a major part of my life. Um, going back before rugby was other sports, football and all that kind of stuff. So that was the end of a, a athletic journey of my life. And um, it really changed everything. Right. And what country did you represent when you played? I forgot. I represented America. I played uh, I played overseas in Australia for a couple of seasons, mm -hmm. and I represented the U.S. in the Rugby League World Cup. Woo. So fun. <laughs> I mean, it's. Uh, I've heard so many athletes talk about that story. And injury takes a lot of people out, and they're having to really shift. And a lot of them do go into the entrepreneurial world now. We mm -hmm. talked about this before. So you had said, you mentioned that you've always been an entrepreneur. Yes. And I don't know if many athletes or anybody that's coming into that space ever felt like they were that. So what what got you onto that mode before you even were going into the entrepreneurial space? I've always felt that way. I know a lot of entrepreneurs feel that way, like they've always had that in them. But um, for a lot of people, I know like you go to college, you get your degree, you think this is the path I'm on now that that entrepreneurial side of things is over um, and they just fall into routine. Um, but for me, that that never left me. It was always going to be I always wanted to do something different. I always wanted to I never wanted to follow a standard path. And thankfully, I found my wife is that same way. Um, I know your husband's that same way. So we're lucky to have those partners. Not everyone has that luxury. But um yeah, that that entrepreneurial side never left, um, and it, it it always drove me to do you know something. I had I, I tried many. I had some other businesses I tried, um, had to shift out of those because it just what it it wasn't right. And to, and I eventually found the the Unmotivated Habits podcast, and it just felt perfect. And um, you said something on my show. I, I was trying to remember what it was. It was I think when passion outweighs fear. Was was that your your yeah. um your line yeah. i found something where the passion outweighed the fear of of getting into it and w caring what people thought and things like that so when you when you don't care about the failure because you're so passionate <laughs> when you find something like that that matches your entrepreneurial spirit it's just it's huge yeah no i love that you know i something that came up recently for me is um procrastination i always classified procrastination as lazy. And mm -hmm. I watched this webinar and the lady's like, no, there's like five types of procrastination. I was like, and when I was looking, I'm like, um, well, I'm all of them. <laughs> um, <laughs> <Me too>. but, <laughs> and you go, well, you know, I still get a lot done, but there's so much procrastination. Now you have a different name for it. And I think it might be similar. You call them ruts. Can you talk about how you get yeah. out of these ruts? And is that, is it similar to procrastination? It is. And I, I actually want to do my next episode on procrastination because I have <laughs> two episodes recorded that I am like, I can't wait to get out. And I write in my <laughs> journal every morning, release the episodes, right. release the episodes. I've, I haven't, like, if you notice, if, if anyone sees my podcast, I've, it's been like a month since I released one right. uh, because I've been procrastinating. <laughs> um, but it's that I wouldn't call a rut. I have a, a four month old <laughs> that, I'm, right. that I'm currently um, <laughs> spending all of my time with. So I have a built in excuse there, but yeah, ruts are huge. And um, hmm. when I find myself getting into a rut, that's the whole point of why I started my podcast. You just have to remember that you need to start small again. So recently hmm. one of my ruts was I haven't been moving as much as I was um, just getting my steps and getting my exercise in and I was missing my little daily target I had for myself. So I just put my goal back to something I could hit. And ever since then, I've been hitting it, going over, going over, going over. So these ruts, um, for me, it's important to remember when I'm in a rut, as long as I've been trying to constantly improve, I, I always compare it to like the Amazon stock. If the Amazon stock dips 10% right now or 20% or 50%, you look at that stock and you look at where it was 10 years ago, you're like, whoa, it's still way better than it was before. You just got to right. pick up where you left off and start getting better again. But as long as you're trying to constantly improve, those ruts 
um, they're not so bad and you can get yourself out of them quicker. They're not, um, you're not hitting rock bottom. You're just in a, like for me, that, that movement, the rut I was in, it, it was still so much, so far over what I had been, you know, five years ago where I was really, um, not doing anything. So mm -hmm. the key to getting out of those ruts is to, to take a, a step back, realize where you are is okay. And, um, just do small things to get yourself out of them. No, I but like yeah, that. ruts, ruts are huge. And, um, it's, there's so many different views on how to get out of ruts, but for me, it's just keeping things simple. Right. I think that, you know, for those that are procrastinators and do get in ruts, we make sometimes make it so complicated that getting out is more um, of an ordeal than just getting out. <laughs> make yeah, <it> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Because for like, I remember when I was in sales, if I was in a rut, it was like, all right, tomorrow I need to make 50 calls. I need to look up everyone in the database and reach out to everyone I can. And then I just be so overwhelmed, I'd lose track. Like, it's like, you know what, call five customers and have five great conversations tomorrow and that'll get you out of that rut. Right. But you can like, apply it to anything really. Right, small wins and just getting through that. Now you also deal with fear. Um, mm -hmm. I too have dealt with fear and didn't know it till I got in business and it really came to a full front of like, you are fearful of a lot of things. Yeah. Have come through a lot of them, still it's a daily choice. So how do you deal with fear? Fear is one of those things, it's like, a, I think it's like a muscle that you have to work out like anything else. Um, if you do one thing that you know you're scared to do tomorrow, you might do another one. You might do two. You might do three, and it's that you get over that fear of um, of failure by failing a lot. I think, and when you when you just do the thing and you fail at it, and you realize, hey, that wasn't that wasn't so bad. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a good way to get over the fear is to just do those things you're scared of. And realize that the worst case scenario is really not that bad at all. So I like to also compartmentalize as well. If I'm scared to do something, I like to think, you know, what's what's the worst that could happen if I try this or if I do it? And um, it's usually not so bad. And then if you do fail, which you, you probably will not fail more often than not, you'll succeed. Um, so failure, trying it, failing, and then also the succeeding part of it's like, oh, wow, maybe, what else can I succeed at? But Getting over fear is just is just doing those things you're scared of. So you know, I'm going to ask you, what is a fear that you had been afraid of that you have now done and you had crossed over that threshold? Uh, starting the podcast was a big one because you know you talk to people about it and they're like, why are you doing that? Or you know, <laughs> okay, who's who's going to listen? Like, I don't know. But if, if someone listens, that's good enough for me. It turns out a lot of people want to listen. A lot of people want to uh, are happy to, to give input and they're passionate about it. Since I started the podcast, so many people reach out. They're like, I love this episode or, hey, you should reach out to this person, have them on. Um, so that was a big fear I got over. Um, some of the other ones, the biggest, the biggest fear I had was um, when I asked my wife out on a date. That was probably the biggest fear I had. And uh, what I, I'm trying to remember what I did. Um, well, it turned out great. You're married. And it turned out. <laughs> it turned out so great. I think. So what I did there is there was a concert I wanted to ask uh, my wife out to. And I bought the tickets like six months in advance. And it took me a couple months to to build up the courage to ask her. But I did it. And um, that was the best decision I ever made. And I, and my brother, well, my brother talked about this at my wedding. Um, one of my biggest tools, and I, he just got married this past week, so I reminded uh -huh. him of this because he was, he was, uh, I could tell he was feeling the nerves before his wedding day. But yeah. I love the TV show Cosmos, <laughs> and I, <laughs> I go back and I watch the the parts about how big the universe is, and whenever I'm feeling scared about something, I realize how. Um, how small things are in the grand scheme of things. And if you fail, right. how it's not a big deal at all. And that gives me the courage to do anything. Oh, I love that. And I love that. And I love your story. I think there's so many little things that come up and, and we don't know. And I've noticed that anytime you cross over that threshold of like, I'm afraid I'm here and you cross through it and you're like, no, I'm just going to do it. I'm committed. I'm going to do it. And you get to the other side and you're like, 
why did I wait so long? Like, oh, I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Have you ever had that happen where it's like, all oh, the time. it wasn't that all hard. It wasn't yeah. that crazy. I was more all up in my head than actually pushing through. Um, my, you actually have, oh yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so ahead. much of that. It's There's so much wasted time where you're like, I should have done that years ago. <laughs> And you have one about public speaking. I know there's a lot of people out there. I mean, even getting on a podcast and doing this. Yeah. Uh, you know, being alone might be a little scarier because you're solo, yeah. but having somebody with you, it's like, it kind of takes the, the stress down. You're mm -hmm. like, okay, I'm not alone. We're here together. Um, but when it comes to public speaking, you're standing on that stage alone and you have a unique way of like how you deal with this. So I want, <laughs> if you can share your story. I forgot about that, but yeah, I do. And I still use it. I still use it all the time. I used it in sports. I used it in public speaking, mostly um, karaoke, whatever you're doing. Whoa, <laughs> but there you go. <laughs> I, I envision, um, <clears throat> I envision my anxiety. Uh, I envision an on off switch, like a light switch mm -hmm. where I can just turn the anxiety off and I flip that switch off. And for, I, I told you, like, I wish I could explain why it works for me. I, I yeah. can't. I've told some other people, like my dad, it works for my dad, my wife, not so much. She's, she doesn't like public speaking, but yeah. So I envision my anxiety as like a switch I can just shut off. And uh, I used to do that before big rugby games. Um, anytime I have to speak to people it, but to the point where I don't need, I don't really need to do it anymore because I've right. gotten so used to it, but that's how I used to get over the anxiety of, of public speaking or any kind of event like that. Um, and I can't explain why it works for me, but I encourage people to try it. Envision your anxiety like an on-off switch. Right? And just shut it off and see if it works for you. Just don't turn it on. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. wait, I turned it on, man. Yeah. And if, it, if that's if that's too hard, I haven't tried it. Maybe it's a dimmer switch where you can just turn it down a little bit. <laughs> right, just turn it down. Just a little bit. Yeah. Just turn it down. Yeah. But I think when you build those muscles and, I, and it kind of relates to sports, there's so much about sports and business that correlate. And it's like the more you build the muscle, the more you practice, the more you do it, the less you're going to feel it right at the beginning, like a rush. It's like a game when yeah. it just starts. And you're like, ah, um, yeah. but then after you're in the game, you're in the game. And after you're on the stage, you're on the stage. And I always do a breathing ex exercise to calm me down. So I know everybody's got their own thing, but it's like if I could just take a d deep breath in and go, okay. Yeah. And, and then go for it. But um, so I'd love to hear about some more shifts. You now have a new little one and yeah. you have the podcast. You said that's your built in your built in excuse for now. But um, <laughs> maybe talk about that journey because you're an entrepreneur you're working. You've got your podcast. Now you've got a kid. How are you balancing it all? And your wife and life. Um, how does it work? Uh, it For me, it I think it's all the work I put in before but it seems to just be falling into place and working. I think it, I think it was all the little things I did leading up to it. And my wife and I, obviously the way we are, we read plenty of books and um, where we, we got really prepared. I think preparing for, for anything is key, not just jumping right in. No one, I don't think anyone's prepared to have a child. I don't think anyone's like, all right, now we're all set to do this. We we know <laughs> everything that could happen. That's that that one was a combination of preparing, but also just jumping in and doing it because there's never a right time to <laughs> there, there's never a right time to start a business. You you just gotta jump in before you're ready. There's never a right time to have a kid. You just gotta jump in and figure it out. But um I can't tell you how I'm balancing it all. It's just I think it's just working out because I did the work in the first place. I took a, I took a new job where I knew I'd have the ability to clock out. Um, I have the podcast, which I can do on my own time. Uh, I, I have a great support with my wife where we give ourselves, we give each other time to, okay, you go get your workout in, you go do what you need to do. Um, and it's just, I think the way I balance it is by preparing for it, to be honest. Yeah. And then following through, it sounds like that balance yeah. of giving each other the space and how healthy is that? I think that sometimes you get in those situations and one person feels like they're doing more than the other. And then you get just get yeah. into this round circle about it. So thank you for sharing 
the preparation and you guys are sure. fulfilling on it. And I think you hit something really great. I mean, my husband and I, we don't have kids yet. And we, we have said next year for almost 10 years now. And, <laughs> you know, it's like at this point, we're just going to need to adopt a 10 year old so we can catch up to where we should have been <laughs> because we just keep saying we're going to do it this year, this year, this year, this year. And so my family's now got to the point where they're like, is it this year? <laughs> yep. And we're like, yeah. I know so. some people that will listen to this that can relate to your story <laughs> for sure. But you guys jumped in and you've got a beautiful little girl, right? And she's yes. the light of your guys' life now. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's it's really something else. I, I listened to someone say, um, you know, I try to meditate to my breathing techniques. Um to really get into like a really deep meditative state, but like none of that compares to just her looking at you and laughing. Like that gives you that, that gives you that feeling that you chase and you get it like five times a day, just, yeah. just staring at them. It's, it's really amazing. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. So I'd love to, if we could just kind of dive a little bit into your world that, about the shifts you've taken. Cause mm -hmm. you know, you started in the rugby space, you played pro, you went to the business world, you worked on the habits, everything went a little bit. Uh Oh, we just lost your video, Michael. Can you still hear me? I can. Okay. I'll keep talking. And I'll see if the camera comes back. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to keep going for it. And those listening, thanks for still chiming in and watching. Sure. Um, so tell us a little bit about the shifts that you've taken in your life or your business that kind of stand out, things that just stand out for you in your world. Sure. Um, <clears throat> when I when I decided I was going to go all in on the rugby journey, um, I booked a plane ticket to Hawaii and just went. I didn't have a place to stay. I had some friends out there that I knew um, would let me couch surf. I called them when I landed. <laughs> and and then from that point on, we just worked out every day. I, I cashed in all my my savings. I cashed in all. I had a bunch of stocks I had been um, – working on since I was young. I cashed them all in, booked a ticket from there to Australia. And um I kinda I I kind of just went for it. And there were I, I'm lucky enough that I have a, a loving, supporting family. So um it wasn't like if I if I failed I'd I'd be on the streets. I could always go back and stay with somebody. I, I know a lot of us have that. We're lucky enough to have that. But that was a major shift. Um that was a that was probably my most extreme example of just going for it, and um, it just it worked out thankfully because I was super passionate about it. That's a good example of the passion outweighing the fear. Mm -hmm. um, then from there, I think the biggest one of the biggest shifts after that, besides um, my wife, who we've we've talked about all, <laughs> a lot, um, was just recently making the shift to leave a um, a, a super high paying comfortable job to one that was, um, you know, much, much less money, but, um, one that allowed me to follow my passions a bit more. Yeah. And there was, there were a lot of small shifts in between where I, I tried to start some businesses with friends, with, with my wife, we tried to start a business, but, um, those are the, the two major shifts I'd say where, um, I really went for it and it, it ended up working out. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. I think, you know, my, I have a girlfriend and she told us that she, at the age of like 20 or 21, traveled the entire world um, on her own. She planned it all out. She put everything into place. She did all the excursions and she just did it by herself. And of course that was like, you know, 20 years ago, but it was like, oh my God, that's so exciting. Yeah. So to hear you say that there, are, there are those times where sometimes you just got to take the leap and and it yeah. works and it's amazing to hear and it's inspiring i think for anybody listening today and you're thinking oh i don't know i don't know i know maybe you should just do it i mean yeah what is it gonna hurt you go back i mean i know, <laughs> I know. There, like if you really weigh it i always say do the pros and cons okay what's the pros what's the cons and figure it out like i don't know if you did that you sound like you just said forget i'm committed let's just go um, yeah and it's another thing is just to remember i know a lot of people think like but what if what if it doesn't work and I've wasted right. that time? You got to view life more like a, a marathon than a sprint. That's a big one. Um, li like life is is different now, and um, if you fail, you haven't really lost 
all that much. Like you can, there's plenty of people who lose everything at, at 60 and they build it back up. So if you lose everything at 20 or if you lose everything at 30, or if you lose everything at 40, you still have plenty of time. Uh, and if you have that mindset, you're going to be, you're going to get back on track. Absolutely. And I think that's such great advice for anybody. I mean, you look at like KFC, I think he was like 50 when he started. It's like when yeah. you start a mega empire, um, you just, you, if you are in it and you're moving, you're committed, I think that's what gets you. And like you said, you get very clear on what you want. And I think as you do get a little older, some hit the wealth very young and some of yeah. us that are, you know, getting into their careers in their thirties and forties. Um, I think it's really our commitment to our success and commitment to believing ourselves. So what is, how do you, what's your focus on that? Because I'd be interested because yours incremental, um, you know, motivation uh, and no motivation. I do want to talk about that too. Yeah. But how do you handle those like um, places where you're at in life? Like what's your take on it? Um, that's a good question. Well, it, for me, the, as far as the incremental stuff, it's just taking a long-term view on everything. Mm -hmm. So instead of, um, trying to, for, for example, instead of trying to get fit and trying to get in shape, uh, for me, I said, you know what, I'm going to be, I'm going to be the, the fittest 50 year old ever. And I got plenty of time to do that. Right. <laughs> if I just start small, right. If I start small right now, I'll, I'll have plenty of time. And yeah. I've, I've done that with, um, with our money. So with our investments, mm -hmm. I'm like, all right, if I just start small right now and just build it and build it and build it by the time I'm ready to retire, I'll, I'll have, um, I'll have plenty of money in the bank as long as you start small right now. So, uh, it's taking a, no matter where you are, 30, 40, 50, you can take a longer view on what your goals are and start small and sustainable. Like you said, no, no motivation required. I like to set goals for myself that I can do even on days where I roll out of bed and I'm feeling, uh, I'm not feeling my best, but you know what? I can still hit this. I can still run a mile today or I can still walk a mile today. I can still get to smaller. I could get to the end of the block today. I can meditate for one minute today. That's not an issue. So right. it's, it's taking a long-term view on things so that you can sustainably build. So where, when did, when did the no motivation required, when did that kind of like hit you? Like the aha, you know, when you have those moments, like mm -hmm. I think about a lot of things, like for me, I'll go walk. And like, if I'm really in tune, I'll walk and all kinds of things will flood in. So where, yeah. at what point did that hit you in your life? that no motivation required. That hit me when I was, like I said, trying to get back into shape and I said, okay, so I'm not going to hit the gym for two hours a day, but I can hit 10,000 steps a day. That's, that's mm -hmm. easy enough, right? I was, I was a professional athlete. I can walk 10,000 steps a day, but 10,000 steps a day turned out to be a lot of steps. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't realize. Like maybe 5,000. <laughs> yeah. So I just started tracking myself to see what I did regularly. And I was, I was in sales and working from home and I was probably getting, I was getting about 5,500 steps a day. This was uh, a few years back. So I was like, wow, I, I was trying to double my output. That's not, that's not going to happen. So I, I kind of said 500 extra steps. I can, and that for me, that was to the end of my, I had a long block. It was the end of my block and back. I said, if I can just do 6,000 steps a day over the 5,500 I'm doing, that's my, that was my starting point. Um, and I started doing that. And when that became like nothing, when that became something that I was easily doing every day, I bumped it up to 6,200, 65 to the point where I got to, I think this, this past October, I was doing a challenge where I was doing 30,000 steps a day and it felt, it, it didn't really feel like all that much, but um, yeah, so it's just, that's when it hit me. It was like, just set goals that are a little above what you're already doing and then build on them. So that was my that was my aha moment of you just you just got to set them a little higher than where you currently are. Yeah, and I love that because I think so many people count themselves out because they're like, oh, I don't have that kind of motivation. I'm not, you know, yeah. they count themselves out so easily. But hey, if you're already doing it, get your baseline. And then, yeah. like we say, raise the bar. Like, what is, yeah. you don't have to raise your bar compared to this person that is running 10 miles a day. You just need to raise the bar for you. No, yeah. no comparison. Just where are you at? Where are you at in your business? If you're trying to be somebody else, 
you're you're in the wrong spot. You need to be you where you are, and then work your way up, and you'll get better yeah. over time. And, and um, it's it's amazing how fast it happens. People would be yeah. surprised because I went from that to uh, before I knew it, I was easily getting ten thousand steps a day. But I said, you know what? It's it's a lot of time to walk ten thousand steps a day. I'm going to run a mile. So I'd wake right. up and run a mile, and then waking up and running a mile became the norm. Then two miles, and three miles, and then I was like, you know what? I'm getting all my steps out in the morning, so I'm going to mix in a 10-minute workout. And before I knew it, I was like completely back to myself and feeling fit and getting my work done. And I had enough time to – it wasn't cutting into my family time. I could cook and I could clean around the house. And it it was such a um, such a snowball effect that happened. It seemed like it happened so gradually. But within you know within a year, I was a, a different person. Wow. I love that. I love that. Now, talking about that, I always like to get a little wisdom from our shifters as they come on the show. And one thing I always like to ask is, what do you wish? You know, you're doing the Un Unmotivated Habit podcast. You've mm -hmm. got your, your stuff that's moving forward. But what do you wish people really knew about what you do? Um, I wish people knew that it was that it's it's really not as hard as it seems. They're, the the level for entry is for what I'm doing. It's a a microphone and a and a you you could do it from your phone. It's it's just anyone can do it. So there's a lot of people whose barrier is you know I don't have I don't have the equipment or I don't have the technical know-how. We're lucky enough to live in a time where anyone can get their voice out. If you have a, a good idea, if you have something you want to tell the world, anyone can do it. I wish that's what I wish people knew. It's it's easier than you think. I love that. That's such great advice. And I, I always like to ask this next question, and that is what keeps you moving? So you had an injury, you've yeah. you know, changed careers. What is that? I know it might be something around the incremental pieces, but um, because that is just you, that's where you are, and that's what you're doing, and it's so inspirational. But is there anything? Mm -hmm. I mean, and if it is, keep it true. Like what keeps you moving every day? Uh, my wife, I think, and her yeah. support. So I, I'm just, I'm very lucky to have such um, a supportive wife. But um, for anyone out there with a wife or a partner who, who is, who's in our, our same position, um, and I, I don't know if you agree with this, but it's relationships are a lot of work. So it's mm -hmm. getting on the same page is not easy. So it's a lot of talking. It's a lot of asking each other, hey, what do you want to do? What's, what are you passionate about? And getting on the same page. So for me, it's the support system. And really, my wife and I have worked really hard um, to have the best relationship we possibly can. And we're so thankful for each other and our families. So for me, it's it's support. That's what keeps me. That's what keeps me going. I love that. I love that. Well, you're up to some great things. How do those listening today or watching here live with us, how do they get in touch with you? What's the best way? So if you just Google Unmotivated Habits podcast, you'll find um, my Instagram. I think the Instagram is Unmotivated Habits, uh, and there's a link to my personal Instagram on there. Uh, I'll post links to all the episodes there, and then unmotivatedhabits.com. And then I'm not sure what my Facebook is Unmotivated Habits as well, I think. So everything's Unmotivated Habits <laughs> if you just search me. Right. Awesome. Awesome. And I think we met on matchmaker.fm. So we'll give a yes. shout out that you can connect with podcasts if you're looking to be on the show or if you are um, have a show and want to get people on there. It's just such a great platform. And it was such it a is. pleasure. You know, I got blessed to be on your show and um, it was just an incredible time. So if you're out there and what kind of guests do you like to have on your show? Maybe we can do a pitch for guests that can come share their their journey. Anyone and everyone who's trying to improve, which I think everyone seems to fit into that category. So you mentioned matchmaker.fm. I've got a backlog of people I'm speaking to right now to have on the podcast. Um, you can reach out directly to me from my website. But yeah, Matchmaker is a great service and um, that's a good one. But yeah, anyone who wants to come on the podcast, reach out and we'll chat. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Michael, for taking the time today to connect with our audience and share your story. It's inspirational and you touched my heart and I'm sure you're going to touch, move and inspire those listening today. You've inspired me as well. Thank you for having me on. I really appreciate it. 
Absolutely. And for those listening in here live, we are here every Tuesday with guests, amazing guests like Michael, sharing their journey and their shifts in life and business. We've got an incredible uh, lady joining us next week, how you can take your spiritual side and make money doing it. So it's going to be a really fun show. I hope you join us. And Fridays, 10 a.m. Central Time, if you want to join us, we are live audience. So anybody can join us. This is cool, Michael. I don't know if you know this. We can have everybody that has as an iPhone, if you can download the app, we've got a way for you to join our podcast and we can have multiple guests at one time. So it's a fun, fun show, part of our platform. So we're going to get out of here. So for all those listening today, keep on the move.